The background is that we've been looking at a drug called propanolol, which is a commonly used uh, beta blocker, and it has uh, a very wide range of evidence to suggest that it would be useful to, as an addition to cancer treatments. The, uh, there's a, quite a broad range of trials. There are some phase three trials. Um, propanolol is a commonly used non-selective beta blocker. Uh, it's got a very wide range of clinical uses. It's uh, primarily hypertension and angina, but also anxiety and um, uh, quite a broad range of uh, uses in, in psychological as well as physical um, illnesses. And more pertinent to this, uh, a form of propranolol um, has been created for use in children who suffer from a very vascular um, benign tumour called hem uh, hemangiomas, um, which is quite relevant in the case of um, looking at malignant tumours. We think it's a potential uh, anti-cancer agent because there's a really broad range of evidence. We've got uh, in vitro evidence in cell lines, we have evidence from um, animal models, and there are also um, uh, case reports where uh, propanolol has been used to treat specific cancers. So it's a very broad range of evidence that comes together to suggest that this could be quite a potent drug to use. There's some really interesting evidence for a rare soft tissue sarcoma called uh, angiosarcoma. Uh, we've, there we can see um, evidence that goes from in vitro to in vivo to use in humans where um, a small number of patients have been treated with an, um, angiosarcoma that's spread, which is a, 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 a situation that, that doesn't have uh, uh, many standard treatments and the uh, response rate when they've used it with propanolol has been 100% so very good responses. The interesting thing about propanolol is that um, when it's combined with a number of other agents and used in a perioperative period, so at the time of surgery, it seems to interrupt a metastatic cascade. And so that's um, an area that's quite interesting, being able to do something at the time of cancer surgery to reduce the risk of metastatic spread later on. Like a lot of the old drugs that we're looking to repurpose, propanolol's got a, a, quite a broad range of um, mechanisms of action. There's evidence to show that it's anti-proliferative, that it has effects on invasion and cell migration, uh, it's anti-angiogenic and it's immunomodulatory. So all of these things are relevant um, at the time of metastases. So as a drug, it has multiple targets that may be useful. There's a, a, a broad range of clinical trials at the moment. There's a, a phase three clinical trial in colorectal cancer where they're using it in the perioperative period. So they're combining it with a drug called etodilac, another repurposed drug, and they're giving this at the time of colorectal cancer surgery to see if it will reduce the, the risk of recurrence. Uh, but there are other trials in different settings, in breast cancer, uh, in angiosarcoma, high-risk neuroblastoma, so actually a very active field of trials at the moment. A drug that seems to uh, synergize with a number of um, chemotherapies, so there's uh, evidence that it synergizes with paclitaxel, vincristine, vinorilvin, um, it's also been used in combinations with uh, low-dose um, cyclophosphamide and metronomic chemotherapies and with other repurposed drugs like etodilac. As uh, Ben just mentioned, there are a lot of very interesting options to evaluate in clinical trials with propranolol, uh, mostly in combinations, but the goal of the Anti-Cancer Fund is if there are positive results from these uh, trials, we want to make sure that those drugs also make it into daily clinical practice. And uh, that's a major concern today because in the current Euro European regulation, it's only the market authorization holders that can apply for label extension.
because that will be exactly what you will need. As you have heard, propranolol now is used for other purposes. But uh, yeah, we are trying to talk to the regulators and see if things can be changed because it's very obvious it's a generic drug that is now produced by at least 10 different generic companies and none of the companies is interested in applying for label extension because there's no return of investment for them so there's absolutely no incentive so we hope that we will find a way to assure that positive results from these trials will finally be implemented in the daily practice. We're also collaborating actually in a European trial uh, for that but there the advantage of um, of aspirin is the, that the low dose aspirin is available in, in all countries at the right doses and that uh, so maybe it will be easier without really registering it for that purpose that it will get into the system. We, we really think we now have uh, about uh, eight uh, uh, trials running all with repurposed drugs combinations so uh, we really think there's some potential for really valuable new options there.